Hi guys, welcome to this brand new channel, Nafisa at Home. Here you can expect to see everything related to interiors, cooking and cleaning. And here and there, I might include a few um, or a couple of mommy related content as well. So what I really wanted to do because, because some of you guys from my previous channel may know that I am a new mom, is to share some of my newborn must-haves. These were videos that I watched when I was pregnant for the first time with my first baby girl. Um, and I wanted to know what items I might need as a new mom. So I hope this video serves you and I hope it's as beneficial to you as they were. Videos of this type were to me when I was a new mom. So yeah, if you're expecting, congratulations. Congratulations. Trust me, it's a beautiful thing to be a mom. So I hope you guys are also excited for the journey. Um, so we're going to be talking about newborn must-have items. Obviously, aside to these items, there are other things that you can get as well that you might find beneficial. Um, but these were the things that from my experience, I thought were essential, like you really needed. Of course, it's based on my experience, guys. So, you know, take whatever you want from this video and leave out whatever doesn't work for your lifestyle. OK, OK, so we're going to begin with feeding the baby. When it comes to feeding the baby, what you need is going to differ depending on how you're going to feed your baby. And sometimes you might have a plan and things might not work out. For me, I planned to breastfeed right from the get go. But one thing that I also knew that I wanted to do is to also get the baby used to the bottle so that I can have a little bit more freedom. I'm self-employed um, and I like going out and about and I didn't know how comfortable I would be taking a newborn baby out into the world when they are just a few weeks old, um, whether I'll be nervous about that or not. So I wanted the option of being able to bottle feed the baby, but bottle feed the baby using breast milk. However, if you're going to breastfeed exclusively, what you're definitely going to need are a breastfeeding cover. And that can be any type of breastfeeding cover. You can find loads of them on um, Amazon. I will link a couple da um, down below. I don't have a breastfeeding cover because I don't use one because I don't breastfeed out in public. But if you're planning to breastfeed, exclusively and not use bottles at all and whenever you go out your baby's definitely going to need to eat if you're out for long enough so you're going to need something to cover yourself with if you don't have a breastfeeding cover what you can get is just a massive blanket this is one of the really big blankets that i have for my daughter is by aiden and anaya and i got this from amazon i will link it in the description box down below as well and this works really well you can put it over your shoulders and just tie it and then have this right over your baby's head like that and you can breastfeed them so yeah these covers work great for breastfeeding purposes um but the ones specifically made for breastfeeding work just as well as long as it's a very very large kind of um light blanket it will work perfect for you if you're breastfeeding um, another thing that i would recommend whether you're a breastfeeding mom or not as long as the breast milk is coming out of you i would highly recommend that you get um some some breastfeeding pads these pads are great for when you are leaking because when your milk comes in sometimes you get an overflow of milk and when the boob gets too much milk you'll find that it starts leaking and your bra would get wet sometimes if you're not careful it will leak onto your clothes and you notice like a patch a wet patch around um, the boob area so these are great for you to wear the way that you wear these is that you basically slip them inside of your bra and it absorbs the excess um, milk that may be coming out of you. So, okay, so that's for the um, mothers who are planning to exclusively breastfeed. If you're not planning to exclusively breastfeed, this next item is an absolute must have for me. It's expensive, but if it broke today, I would take my last few pennies and buy another one. And that is a breast pump. There are a lot of breast pumps out there that you can buy. Um, and different moms prefer different type of breast pumps. I did a lot of research on the breast pumps, so I highly recommend you research your breast pump before you buy it because the good ones are expensive. The good ones are not cheap, um, but the one that I made a final decision on is the LV. One of the main reasons why I decided to go with the LV is because it's a wireless um, and you can just slip it into your bra. You can be 
be pumping as you're doing things around the home. Like I said, I'm self-employed and even though I had the baby, I'm not going all the way up to nine months before I start working again. So I knew that I, I'm going to need that freedom of just being able to pump as I do other things. I don't have time to sit down for 14 minutes in one place and just be pumping. So this came in handy a lot for me. What I recommend you do if you're looking for savings on this um, pump is that you try to buy it either during the Black Friday sales or the Christmas sales or whenever there's a sale going on, look for it then. I picked up mine during the Amazon Prime sale and I got quite a good deal on it. So that is one way that I think you can do this in a much more affordable way because when you do see the price, you're going to think, what? But it works really great. The only complaint I have about this pump is that the battery life is quite poor. If anyone from LV is watching this video, please improve the battery life. For the price that we pay, we shouldn't have to be complaining about battery life when it comes to this pump. Any other complaint I do not have about this pump. It has worked great. I haven't had any faults with it. It's a learning curve at the beginning though because you have to know how to set it up and how to use it. But once you know how to set it up and use it, it's perfectly fine. You can adjust and reduce um, the suction, um, the intensity of the suction. So you can make it suck a little bit less or you can make it suck um, a little bit more intensely. But I absolutely love this. And once I pump my uh, the, the milk out, this you can put in the fridge separately if you're not ready to pour it into a bottle. But with this, you're able to store your milk into the fridge or in the freezer and or just pour it straight into the bottle and feed the baby. So speaking of bottles, my next um, newborn must have, of course, if you're planning to feed your baby using a bottle, is going to be a bottle. And I went through a few bottles before I settled on the one that I have now. This is the Nano Baby. It's a silicone based bottle, it's nice and squishy. I didn't have any issues with like milk pouring out of it. As long as you close it properly, it's secure and it's, milk is not gonna be coming out, which I was having a problem with with other bottles. Um, but yeah, all in all, I'm very happy with this particular Nano Baby bottle. I absolutely loved it, it worked great for us. The next thing on the feeding list, if you're going to be bottle feeding your baby, is to try to get something like this, a bottle warmer to keep um, hot water into for when you're traveling um, or when you're just going about, maybe you have to go to the mall to do some shopping or whatever. You're going to be out of the house for a bit. You need a space to be able to warm your baby's bottle. And this is just what I do. Um, I put hot water in here. This is a flask and this is the lid. And I put the hot water in here. You then take your bottle, you dip it in here, you let it warm up, shake the bottle, feed the baby, right? So this is a really great way of um, warming up your baby's milk when you're out and about. Another way that you could do it in case you are pumping and keeping the milk inside the freezer is to get you some um, milk uh, sacks, if you like. These are for storing milk in the fridge or in the freezer so i will pour my milk in here or if the milk is already in here and been stored in the freezer i would remove it let it sit out for a couple of hours before i'm due to go out and then once we're out i can take this pour my water as usual and then dip this in here to warm up the milk and then pour the milk into the bottle and then feed the baby um it sounds like it's a lot but it's really quick when you're doing it in in real time and for me i prefer that than having to you know breastfeed my baby and pop speaking of milk i want to recommend something that would be very useful to new moms who are having a problem with their milk production because sometimes you just don't get enough milk coming in and that happened to me i had my baby a few days after my milk came in so it took a couple of days before my actual milk came in and when I got home from the hospital the first thing that I did was to take this right here it's called milk flow and it's 100% organic fenugreek and fennel tea fenugreek powder is known to ink to help with the production of um, breast milk so if you're struggling with the production of your breast milk you're not getting enough breast milk coming in I highly recommend you try fenugreek check with your doctor always but if your doctor gives you an okay then definitely go for it because i have found that it really does work and it helps for you to increase your milk production also on the feeding i forgot to mention you're going to need some kind of a bib so i really love these ones from amazon once again 
they are like a bib they come with a button that you can button up on the baby's neck but you can also use them as a burp cloth by just throwing them over your shoulder and it's nice and large with enough space you know for the baby in case they dribble um, as you're trying to burp them so i really love these they come in a pack of three i'll link them down below the next category we're going to look at is baby changing so for baby changing you want to think about things you need at home and things that you need when you're out and about for home i did not do a baby changing station because i just had this idea that you're going to use a baby changing station for like two months three months and then as soon as they start moving you're going to have to move them somewhere else anyways so i thought nah scrap that i bought myself a very cheap simple changing mat from amazon this is it right here and it worked great for me this i just throw on the floor or i throw it on the bed when she was a newborn most of the time i'll put this on either on the bed or on the sofa and i would put her on top of it and she would change now that she's outgrown the newborn phase and she's almost five months we put this on the floor and we put her on top of it and we change her and i really think that that was the best decision for us because our baby is very active she likes moving a lot she likes kicking her feet a lot and um, she can turn her head side to side and move her body almost halfway now but if you prefer of course to do it any other way go for it i'm just talking about what works best for for me as a mom and for us as parents this way really worked well for us if you live in a large home you can get multiple ones of these you can have one upstairs one in the living room and it's just easy access so i highly recommend that of course you cannot change your baby without nappies so yes you are going to need some nappies in the newborn phase you are going to need either size zero or maybe size one depending on how big you think your baby is going to be normally i would say size zero usually fits most newborns um if not a size one if you're having a larger baby maybe eight or nine pounds then size one should definitely fit do not go crazy and buy a whole load of nappies okay i've seen some videos and people literally stacking up a crazy amount of nappies don't do that because what's going to happen is you're going to end up wasting it because you don't know how you know you don't know the rates that your baby's going to grow into so you don't know when they're going to stop fitting into a size zero and going into a size so if you have a lot of size zeros and then they outgrow it very quickly then you're just left with a whole bunch of size zeros that you don't know what to do with so what i do is i buy a little bit as i go a little bit at a time maybe a pack of 36 two packs of 36 you can see how how far we get with that and then i buy a little bit more and we've been moving on quite nicely without us having to stack up like crazy amount of nappies in in the um storage room so nappies definitely of course you're going to need something to wipe the baby with so we went with the classic water wipes you can do whatever wipes you like as long as it's sensitive and um it's made with most of it is made with water okay because you can have different brands aldi have a great brand that is much cheaper than the water wipes almost the same but again it's for sensitive suitable for sensitive skin and it's made mostly with water another item that you might need when changing your baby is some kind of a nappy rash or nappy cream i didn't do enough research on this as i should have because i would have gotten a better one than this but i have the pseudo creme and i only use this like maybe twice or three times in the whole newborn phase my daughter didn't really have any issues with her her skin in that area so we didn't have a, a use for it but if you're going to go with something pseudocreme is a brand that is known and trusted but there are more organic um better brands than pseudocreme so research nappy creams and see which ones are better so when you're done changing your baby you might want to have some nappy um sacks this i would say probably more so for when you're out and about rather than at home because newborn poops don't really smell they don't really have much of a smell they look green and yellowy and gooey but they don't really have a smell so you can just throw it out it's not a problem but when you're out and about maybe you want to put it in some kind of a nappy sack they come in packs of like 300 on amazon or packs of 150 they come in different colors and they come scented as well so they have a nicer a nicer freshness to them so you put your baby's nappy in there before you throw it away for going out and about 
some of you who are subscribed to my other channel may have already seen seen this but i got this nappy changing bag from amazon i will leave, link everything in the description box for you guys not to worry um and this is really really great this is a portable uh, nappy changing bag as you guys can see it comes with many different compartments it has a zip in here and in here i have a spare changing clothes i have a spare wipe and some spare nappies um and what you do is you open it up like that and you can lay your baby onto this to change their nappy it has more space in here and in here i just have some nappy changing bags and a book um, for her it has more storage room in here in case you've already had um dealt with the soiled nappy and soiled clothes you want somewhere to put it in you can put it in here for now and yeah this is really really great this is magnetic so that the top part fits sticks onto it so yeah i really really love this um nappy changing travel size nappy changing bag next we're going to talk about bath time and for me I bathed my baby in the traditional African way and for that I needed quite a large bathtub um, and I got a foldable one from Amazon that I will link down below for you guys um, and it works great. I sit on a small chair, I uh, you know, lay my legs inside the bathtub and then I bath her while she's sitting on my lap and it's been working great for us. It's the way Africans have been doing it for centuries and that's how I'm continuing to do it. Now to wash the baby, you are going to need either a small washcloth or um, a soft sponge. This one is from the body shop. It's very soft. Don't get something that's really harsh. Babies, their skin is so delicate and they're not rolling in anything. So you don't need to scrub them that hard. So just something to wash their bodies with. What I actually do with this is I dip it in warm water and I squeeze the water onto her so I can have more of a control of where the water is going. And this has been working really, really well for that. In order to wash her, of course, I use the Burt's Bees Baby Bubble Bath. And I really, really like this. It's very simple, it's very clean. Um, there are other brands as well that are simple and clean for baby skin. This um, foams up quite nicely. I use this on her hair and all over her body. I've never had any issues at all. My daughter somehow developed baby acne on her face when she was a couple of weeks old and I was looking for ways to overcome it and one thing I found that really worked amazingly, literally within two days the baby acne was cleared. That is this product. I don't read French. My husband does. He told me what it meant, but I've forgotten. But I will link this product down below. This product is amazing. It is so good for babies' acne. And there is so much of it in here. I've been using this since, since she was a newborn and I'm not even halfway down. Okay. It, all I know is that it's natural and it works super great, super, super great. So if you're having a problem with your baby in terms of face acne, definitely, definitely try this out. What I do with this is I take some cotton. Um, and by the way, you may also need some pure cotton as well for issues like this, for example. I take pure cotton, I pump this onto it, and then I wipe her face with it, okay? So I might wipe her face with just regular water at first just to clean it out and then I do this wipe it and then I don't wash it off after that I just leave it and it clears the acne super fast and so like I said for issues like that you're going to need some cotton pads I use this cotton pad with lukewarm water when I'm giving her a bath and I clean around her ears um, just gently around the belly, belly button when she was a new a newborn um, just areas that are quite difficult to get to this works great for that. Another thing that I would recommend for baby girls, um, because you know when they do poops and poop explosions a lot of the time, sometimes the poops gets into like the crevices of their body and especially around the private area, I would recommend you try some um, baby, make sure it's this type, the baby safe um, cotton bod thing. I use this to clean that area so you can get into the crevices to get out the poops because what you don't want to do is leave that area uncleaned or not cleaned very well and then bacteria develops and that can cause an infection. Having mentioned all of that, it's also useful to get 
couple of trays like this you know these plastic trays they are so useful i got three of these and i have one in the bathroom right now and i just put all of her bath tub her bath stuff in it and it's just helpful to carry around after you've bathed your baby of course you're going to need to wrap a towel around her you can use any towel for a newborn to be honest but what i found is that you know regular towels even if they're they are smaller ones they're just a bit too big for a newborn baby newborn babies are usually so tiny so i do recommend that you have um, a baby towel with a hood you want the hood because babies normally lose um, heat through their heads so most of the time it's nice to have their head covered so that they can still feel quite warm next we're going to talk about grooming and like self-care well-being type items okay the first thing is you might want to get a couple of medicines just on the ready just on the ready okay one of which will be gripe water gripe water is very useful for um gas and newborns are very prone to having gas in their system because remember the whole system isn't working quite well on its own yet so gripe water helps with the release of gas so if you find that your newborn is crying a lot and you don't know what's wrong with them it might be that they have a lot of trap wind in which case you might want to give them this gripe water it's known to be safe for newborns absolutely so even if you call your pediatrician this is probably what they will tell you to try first and if not then definitely take the baby to the hospital but just have this on the ready in case you will need it another thing that is also quite effective for um, colic relief in babies is Infocol as well I got a small pack of Infocol just to have just in case she was screaming one night and I didn't know what to do and guess what I definitely used my gripe water to some extent like look at how much is left I used it quite a bit so yeah it came in handy and I was so glad I was recommended to buy this okay another product that you might need maybe after about the two month phase is cowpaw and this is essentially baby paracetamol for when they have their vaccinations and during some vaccinations the doctor will tell you to give your baby um, cowpaw or any kind of baby um, paracetamol to stop them from having fever okay any cold symptoms as well my daughter did get a cold for a little bit and the cowpaw was helpful the last thing on the kind of medicine list is a supplement and this is vitamin d for babies babies that are breastfed they claim don't get vitamin D and so you have to supplement with vitamin D and I was also told by my midwife that it's important to give the baby vitamin D just to kind of stop them from developing like a bow legs so you know sometimes when baby's legs kind of curve instead of growing straight vitamin D helps their legs to grow more straight and it's good for their bone development essentially so yeah vitamin D drops they will probably give this to you if you're in the UK because I was given this. I didn't have to buy it. But once that finishes, you can go and get some more um, from your local pharmacy. By the way, make sure that you inquire from your doctor about the type of vitamin D that is safe for baby if you're not given it by your doctors. Make sure you always, always, always ask your doctor, your midwife, whoever's in charge of your care, um, the care for your baby make sure you ask them what is suitable for baby before you give it to your child please i cannot emphasize that enough even if you're watching this and you're pregnant be careful what you put into your body make sure every medicine you take is appropriate for pregnant women because you don't want to do something you're going to regret okay next thing in terms of the self-care for baby is one thing that i didn't buy until a lot later on because i told myself i didn't need this so there's a grooming kit for babies that tommy tippy sells absolute waste of money absolute waste of money nothing in there worked for me <laughs> literally nothing um, and I actually bought it because of they had like a nose sucking thing. It was quite a traditional one and I thought that was going to do the job. That did nothing. So my daughter developed a cold and I needed something to use to get out the snots that were just stuck inside her, inside her nose. And nothing worked but the nose Frida. The nose Frida, yes. There's a reason why there's a hype about it. It's because it actually does work. It helps to suck out the snot from your baby's nose, okay? And you feel so sorry for the, for the newborn when they have a cold and they can barely breathe. They're already so tiny anyways. So you're like, oh my God, what do I do? And I love the nose Frida. It comes like this. This part goes into the baby's nose. This part goes into your mouth. 
don't worry it doesn't get into your mouth because there is an area here that blocks the the snot from getting into your mouth so it doesn't get into your mouth at all but the air does and you suck it and the air suctions all of the snot out and it goes in here and then you wash this afterwards with hot water clean it nicely and then it's ready to be used again this i highly 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 recommend if your baby has a cold and you're thinking this thing is just a gimmick it's not it actually works really really well okay highly recommend the nose free doll the next grooming item again i told myself i'm not gonna need that and then i went and bought it okay and my daughter when she came out of me had nails that were like so long i'm like wait what <laughs> her nails were so long and initially i thought i could just use a regular cutting um nail cutting thing like a smaller one for a baby so i had a smaller one that was you know a good size for a newborn it came with the tommy tippy pack and i tried to use it and guys i almost i almost cut a little tiny skin off of her i just couldn't do it at that point i was like no i can't do this i can't do this this is not gonna work so i went on amazon and i ordered the um this nail filing kit and it's probably one of the best pur purchases i have made in a while and i'm so glad that i bought it because it works really really well it comes with the different um roughness in terms of the filers that are on the side in different colors and some are smoother than the others and the silver one is the most is the roughest one and it works really really well it lights up when you turn it on so even if you're trying to file the baby's hands at night you can see what you're doing and now that she's out of the newborn face and she's much more alert she looks at the lights as i'm like filing her nails and it's it's quite entertaining for her and this works really really well this helps you to file down the nails instead of you trying to cut it because the thing is baby are so tiny that it's hard to get that precision right so if you're thinking this is a waste of money it's not because again their nails grow so so fast like i i file it down one week by the next week it's all ready too long so this absolute must have for baby grooming so obviously i'm black and my child is a black girl <laughs> and so hair brushes didn't really do much for us you know this again came in the pack that i bought grooming pack it was a bit useless i don't really use hair brushes on her hair what i do use is a wide tooth comb to try to comb through her hair she came out with beautiful curly hair and i didn't want to mess up the curls but i did want to comb her hair every now and again so yeah a nice wide tooth comb did a good job it was wide enough so she didn't feel any hurt or pain from it um, and it got the job done and kept her curls intact as well so love this if you are going to brush your baby's hair then you will be needing a very soft soft bristle baby brush okay it will do the job their hair is already really soft anyway when they come out of the womb so you don't you really have to do much in terms of moisturization straight up yep shea butter i was actually recommended this at the hospital because when they checked her up they noticed that she had dry skin and they told me right away 100 percent organic shea butter use it on her skin which is great because i had already had some shea butter in my bag when i packed for the hospital and so i've been using this since then on her skin what we were doing right from when she was born is when she would have a bath and her skin was still damp that was the time to apply the um the shea butter not when it's dripping wet so you wipe her down a bit and then you do the shea butter straight away and it's really 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 good ever since then we've never had any issues with dry skin and we've continued to use shea butter all over her body ever since then. Another thing that I use is olive oil. Olive oil on her hair. I would apply some of this all over her hair and I would rub it in and it kept her hair nice and moisturized. I highly recommend. And by the way, if you can get some of these bottles, sometimes you find them in Poundland, sometimes you find them in Super Drugs. Amazon also carries them in a pack. They are very useful. You can put little things like this inside of them and it just makes it easier to use on your baby instead of having a massive, you know, bottle of olive oil. You can use this. So, yeah. So you've washed your baby. You've taken care of their grooming. They just came out of the bath. You obviously have to put clothes on the baby. So 
we're going to talk about clothing that's necessary for the baby number one you're going to need some kind of a hat okay like i said before babies lose heat through their hair so it's always nice to have a hat for them i recommend you get something knitted and something that is a little bit stretchy so that it, regardless of how your baby comes out they'll be able to fit in the hat because the hats that i took to the hospital were not stretchy and they were too big for her head and they didn't fit her head so they gave us this hat from the hospital clothing items for the body i recommend some body suits there are differences between a body suit and a sleep suit these are body suits these ones that have no legs are called body suits at least as it goes here in the UK, okay? The legless ones are bodysuits. You need to put this on the baby before you put on the baby's clothing because babies do tend to feel a little bit colder than we do. Um, if you want like an idea of how many layers to put on your baby, to put on to the baby, um, depending on the weather, I might leave a uh, Pinterest image link for you guys to have a look to see how to dress your baby according to the different temperatures, okay? But yeah, clothing, you probably need, if you had about eight of these, you might want some long sleeves, some short sleeves if it's like summertime that you're having your kid, your baby in, or you might just want a mixture of both or when it's cold she can wear some of this or he can wear some of this and when it's hot they can go for the sleeveless ones but either way you're going to need about seven to eight pieces of this will get the job done honestly you don't need to go crazy and buy like a ridiculous amount i found seven to eight was perfect enough but i wash baby's clothes quite often maybe about twice a week um but my baby wasn't that messy so for me, I would say seven to eight of these is more than enough. So body suits. Then of course, you're going to need sleep suits. And these are the sleep suits. They are kind of like PJs for babies. Very, very cute. One thing I would highly recommend, make sure the ones that you have come with the mittens. Okay, they come with the mittens. So you don't have to buy separate mittens because mittens are so annoying. Those things fall off every single minute like you put it on before you know where you're like where's the mitten the baby's hand i don't want them to scratch their face please just buy the onesies that come with the mittens okay so you can just put it on and it stays on because it's part of the clothing you know genius idea whoever came up with this invention genius okay forget the mittens they are a complete waste of time the only time you will be need needing some mittens is if you check your baby's clothing and you notice that especially the ones for the newborn phase that they don't have mittens already then you're going to need to buy at least a couple of spare mittens so they can put it on whilst they're wearing that particular outfit i did make some of that mistake with some of the outfits that i had already bought for her later on i came to know that they didn't have mittens on them so i had to buy spare mittens and they were just so annoying so from now on i just go with the onesies that come with the mittens the final clothing item that i would say is a must-have if your baby is born in the winter or autumn or any time where it's slightly cold is for you to get them a snowsuit okay and i got this snowsuit from the next baby section very very cute and this was again something we used all the time whenever we were going out there was no way i was going to take my baby out in the uk in january february march april without putting her in one of this so absolutely a must have if you're having a baby that's going to be born in the colder months the next quick mention of blankets don't go super crazy on the blankets what i would say is have a couple of like really massive blankets like this one that i mentioned from aiden and anaya maybe you have like one or two of those and then you want like a thicker blanket something that is suitable for you to use when the baby is in like the the chassis or when they're in the push chair right so something like this right that is much more suitable again my child was born in the winter months so i needed something thick like this to cover her up in and so maybe have a thick one and a light one two three four blankets more than enough okay don't go crazy on the blankets because you're not going to really 
need more than four four blankets you know if you're washing some then you're using some so i think four is the perfect number i have about four and it was the perfect um, number for for us but having a few different thickness is really really good because sometimes you want something over the baby but you don't want them to overheat so the light ones come really really great but sometimes you are outside and it's freezing and the thick ones come in handy as well either way just be careful in terms of how you you put the blanket on the baby make sure you're not covering up their arms so that they don't end up pulling it over their face and then stopping themselves from breathing that can be very very dangerous so be careful how you use the blanket in terms of larger items like the baby's push chair we went for the eye candy we have the eye candy i think seven or six i'll double check but we do have the eye candy push chair and i settled for that one because it, it just had so many of the things that i wanted in a push chair it was suitable for not just one child but for two kids um it was sturdy the wheels were good enough to be able to withstand the hustle and bustle of life i don't drive so most of the time i do take a bus when i'm out and about and i needed a push chair a push chair that can withstand all of that i wanted a push chair with a chassis that i can put the newborn in and she can lay down and be comfortable and it had all of that so yes it was quite a high price ticket item but for me it was worth the price and something that I would use I hope to use for future children's as well so I'm highly happy with my push chair you are going to need a push chair you might need a baby carrier as well because you might not always want to take a push chair everywhere that you go people talk a lot about like the the um baby car seat that converts into a stroller as well so if you drive that might be something that you might want to look into it's quite useful for some mums but i don't drive so i didn't bother buying one and i also heard that it's very small and your child doesn't last in it and i was like i'm not spending <laughs> almost 300 pounds on something that's only going to last me like three months so yeah i didn't go for that but that is an option for you to look into if you're interested in that as well in terms of somewhere for the baby to sleep i recommend something that is suitable for co-sleeping in our bedroom we have a um um, a pack and play and i underestimated how good this was going to be i was like a pack and play do i really want to get that maybe i'll just get a proper cot for the baby and then my husband was just like just get the pack and play play get it get it get it and then i bought the pack and play and now it is so useful for us we have it right next to our bed the baby sleep next to me inside the pack and play um but it's suitable from newborn up to a year i think the one we have is suitable up to like two years or something um and so it has been working great for us and it was very affordable but just something very simple, easy to put in and out, easy to take with you traveling. If you're going somewhere else and you need baby to sleep into, we just highly recommend our pack and play. So that's where she sleeps inside um, the bedroom. Um, in terms of the living room, I had the nice fancy um, cot, mini cot for baby to sleep in to the living room she's already outgrown that we no longer have it here in the living room but you're going to need something that baby can stay in in the living room because you might not always want to take baby all the way to the bedroom when you want baby to sleep because if that's what you're going to do then either you're going to have to stay in the bedroom to watch over baby or you're going to have to buy a baby monitor to keep an eye on the baby while she's in the bedroom or you're going to be having to go back and forth so sometimes it's just easier when the baby's asleep to have something in the living room where the baby can sleep and it's nice as well for when like if visitors come to see the baby and things like that they can just be sleeping there nicely and then when they're awake you can take the baby and you know introduce them to the visitors without you having to go up and down so that is it guys those are my newborn must-haves i don't know how long this video is going to be but i hope you guys are still with me and i hope you found this video beneficial if you have any other questions to ask me please go ahead if i forgot to mention anything that you also want to you know add to this video please do please do if you're an experienced mom and you found something really worked for you please do um, mention it in the comment section as well i hope you guys enjoyed this video i will see you in my next video okay probably in the next few days um on this channel and yeah have a great great day bye